Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and watchOS 9.2 RC is out to developers and public beta testers and this particular update should be the final version that's released to the public as long as there's no additional issues found with it. So that's what a release candidate is and this will be supported on the Apple Watch Series 4 all the way up to the Apple Watch Ultra. Now this came in at a fairly small 208 megabytes. that's on my Apple Watch Ultra, but it can vary depending on the device you're on. Along with this, Apple also released iOS 16.2 RC, iPadOS 16.2 RC, macOS 13.1 RC, tvOS 16.2 RC, HomePod OS 16.2 RC, and iOS 15.7.2 RC, as well as iPadOS 15.7.2 RC. Lots of different things, and those should all release at the same time to the public. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go into our settings here. You can see the build number is 20S361. And this particular update, like I said, brings some new features and changes. The first one has to do with outdoor run. So if we go into our workouts, and I just have the action button set to open up workouts, so it goes in nice and quickly. And if we scroll down and we go to outdoor run, outdoor run now automatically detects when you arrive at a running track and then provides track specific metrics. So if it's a well-known running track, you select this as your workout, it should automatically detect that information and give you more information than you had already. Something else that's new is if you run regularly on the same route, or maybe you cycle or use outdoor wheelchair workouts around the same route over and over, you'll now be able to actually race against yourself. So you can compete against yourself with your previous performance if you're trying to train and maybe run a little bit faster. If we go down to the bottom here, they've updated the kickboxing algorithm. So if you're using kickboxing, it's now updated to be more accurate as far as its overall metrics, according to Apple. If I bring in my AirPods Pro, these are the first generation, as well as the AirPods Max, they'll gain this as well. As long as you have active noise cancellation enabled, and if you're using the noise app, it will actually take that into account now. So if we go into noise here, and as long as these AirPods are connected, let me go ahead and connect them. I'll put them in my ear. You can see here on the watch in the noise app, it says level reduced by AirPods. It's taking into account the overall AirPods noise reduction capability. If I take one out of my ear, you'll actually see that go away and the overall decibel level jumps up. If I put it back in my ear, it detects that reconnects and says level reduced by AirPods. So it's a new feature they've brought in noise just to give you an overall understanding of how much they're reducing the ambient sound based on the overall things in your ear or if you're using AirPods Max. Within the Apple Wallet app, there's something that is a little bit odd since they haven't enabled this yet on iPhone. So with this update, Apple says that Apple Card users with a savings account can now check their balances in Wallet. However, the savings account feature is not yet in iOS 16.2 RC. It was originally supposed to launch with iOS 16.1. They delayed it and maybe it will launch with 16.2, but at the time of the RC, it's not available. So maybe we'll see that in the future with the launch of Watch. 9.2 but they put it in the notes and it's something that should be new but it's a little bit odd that it's not there family setup users can now be invited to the home app to control home pod speakers and smart home accessories and even unlock doors with home keys in wallet so if you use the home app you can see i have cameras and different scenes and things here we can now invite someone directly from family setup instead of them having their own separate account for all of those things so if you have a family within your home and you want to do that you can now do that apple has updated accessibility so that now it supports visualization when the siren is active. So if I press and hold the action button, we can slide over the siren and you'll see the outside rings flash at the rate that you can hear the siren. So we'll go ahead and do that. So you can see that visual representation of what's actually going on. That wasn't there before. Also in accessibility, we'll go in and turn on assistive touch. I've enabled assistive touch on the watch and now it's much more responsive. So the cursor is super responsive and then it understands gestures better. So if we dwell on something, it will select it and we can go down and dwell. It's much easier to select. It also understands gestures better. So I felt that vibrate and it wants me to go back. We'll double 
double clamp our fist again, you'll see it jumps back and forth. It understands those gestures a little bit better. So this is much easier to use, especially with the overall motion controls now. So I'm glad they've improved that. Now there's also bug fixes and improvements in this update. And the first one has to do with crash detection. They've optimized this on Apple Watch Ultra, Apple Watch Series 8, and Apple Watch SE. This could be due to having issues maybe when people were at a theme park on a roller coaster accidentally triggering crash detection, or it could be due to more recently skiers on ski slopes triggering this by accident. Either way, it's been optimized. We'll have to wait and see if that continues to happen though. They've fixed a bug that caused the display of incorrect watch times immediately after dismissing the alarm in sleep focus. So maybe you woke up, you had a sleep focus on, then disabled it. Sometimes time would be incorrect. They've also fixed a bug causing interruptions to mindfulness sessions. So if you were using mindfulness in the middle of meditation, you could have been interrupted before. So that has been resolved in this update. Additionally, there's security updates, but we won't know exactly what those are until this releases to the public. On the Apple security website, they don't update it until the day it's released to the public. So we still don't have details about the previous releases as well with iOS 16.1.2 or tvOS 16.1.1. So hopefully they'll update this as well as watchOS 9.2 when it releases. And as far as when to expect the release, I would expect it as soon as Monday or Tuesday. That's typically what we see with releases. Last year, if we take a look at what we had with watchOS 8 and also iOS 15.2, it was on a Monday. It could be on Monday or Tuesday. Based on what we've had recently, it could be either one of those days. But of course, as soon as I know about it, I'll be sure to let you know. As far as overall performance of the watch, well, I've been using the betas right along and really experienced no difference. And this processor in the Apple Watch Ultra is basically the same we've had for a couple years with a couple small updates. But in general, going between apps, going into apps that I don't typically use all of the time. So maybe if we go into an app I haven't used in a while, maybe go into shortcuts, it opens right up. Maybe we'll go down to... Well, let's go into Lumi. That's the app I have on the complication on the watch face. I'll show you that in a moment. Everything just seems responsive and fast. As far as battery life, I purposely left this off the charger most of the day and it's doing well at 60% despite even installing the update. So it's doing quite well as far as that goes. In general, I haven't really had poor battery life with the betas. Some people have, but later betas seem to be much better. So it's easily getting me a couple days. I typically do put it on a charger at night though with well over 50%, usually 60% or more. So it could go a couple days or even further if maybe I put it in low power mode. As far as the watch face I'm using, well, many people have asked about this. This is actually modular. And if we go to edit it and go over to the next couple spots where there's complications, you'll see the app in the middle is called Lumi. It's a paid app. I bought it myself. I've been using it for a while and it shows golden hour, the best time to take photos. And it's just in the middle here with the calendar in the upper right messages on the left. And of course the other complications below where we have the temperature, the compass and music. So it's pretty simple. I've been using it for a while. I do use it and like it a lot and you'll see my sleep mode automatically turned on as it's getting ready to, well, it's getting late at night now, but you'll see it's on. I turned it off and the time is correct. So that's everything with watchOS 9.2 RC. If you've found anything else, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.